So, uh, why are we seeing a whole bunch of French flags uh, and other people walking around in, you know, cool costumes? So, Ridley Scott's new film Napoleon is filming here, starring Walking Phoenix. I worked on the set about a month ago as an SA, a supporting artist, extra if you will. But this is the second time I've followed production to uh, another country accidentally, because I accidentally followed James Bond to Italy a few years ago after working on that set, so this is actually quite hilarious. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Megan Ruth and I'm a Canadian living in London, England. This video is a bit different because for the first time since before the pandemic, I went traveling outside the UK. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you know that one of the reasons I moved here was because of the incredible opportunities to travel. And London is a great travel hub equipped with multiple airports. Malta is a destination I had been wanting to go for a while. Its beautiful beaches and stunning blue waters were really inviting, especially after a couple of years sitting at home. If you don't know where Malta is, it's a beautiful country in the Mediterranean. It consists of three islands, Malta, Gozo, and Camino. It could easily be a short trip destination, however we stayed for a week which I think was the perfect amount of time to see everything. We stayed in the capital, Valletta, at a lovely little hostel called Palazzo St. Ursula. If you're looking for a budget-friendly hotel in the heart of Valletta, this is a gorgeous place with a lot of character. It also hosts some stunning views of Valletta from the roof terrace. The country is rich with history, from prehistoric temples to the Second World War when the whole country was awarded the George Cross for fighting off German and Italian forces. It incorporates a mishmash of cultural influences from being ruled by many different empires throughout history. After living in London for a few years, it was really interesting to see how much British influence is still spread throughout the country. Malta was part of the British Empire for over 150 years and only retained its independence in 1979. So these are British plug sockets and it's like, what? We're not in Britain, we are in Malta, which is Europe, so I don't understand. <laughs> Valletta is a gorgeous city. It's easily walkable and full of cute streets and restaurants. St. John's Co-Cathedral was a standout with its beautiful Baroque art and architecture. Also, if you're in the city at noon or 4 p.m., a cannon is fired every day, which is really cool to watch. Oh, oh. <laughs> the Blue Lagoon on the island of Camino is one of Malta's top tourist destinations. The water is this magnificent blue, which is incredible to see. We took a ferry from Chikara to get to the island, which was only about 15 minutes. My favorite part of the trip was taking a quad bike around the island of Gozo. The quad hire was 60 euros for five hours, which was absolutely worth it. It was an amazing way to see the island. My only wish was that we had more time there as there is just so much to see. Getting to Gozo was quite easy as there is a ferry that goes straight from Valletta and takes about 45 minutes. Medina is an ancient city which used to be Malta's capital. It is absolutely beautiful. However, when we were there, it was taken over by filming, which blocked access to a lot of the city. And yes, I accidentally followed the film set from London because I did work on it previously about a month before. So that was quite funny. It's actually the second time that's happened. I followed James Bond to Italy a few years ago accidentally because I went to Italy on holiday the same time they were filming. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. It's just a funny coincidence. The Blue Grotto is another popular tourist destination on the southeast coast. We went hoping to take a boat tour around the caves, but it was closed due to the weather being a bit too windy.
Another place I'd recommend is Golden Bay, which is a beautiful beach that hosts a gorgeous sunset. We also found another beach, Riviera Beach, on the other side of the cliff, which was a bit more secluded. Since we went in early May, the water was still a bit cold, so as much as I tried to, swimming was a bit difficult. Malta's ancient history is incredible, and there are various prehistoric temples you can visit. We went to the Tarkshan temples, which are not far from Valletta. The food is generally inspired by a mixture of various European influences. We did find ourselves drinking a lot of Chisk beer, which is the local lager that is pretty inexpensive. Depending where you are, you could get a pint for as little as 3 euro. That's amazing when you're coming from London. We chose to use public transport to get to various places around the island, which wasn't too bad. Buses are 1 euro 50 each way, but they also offer travel cards depending how much you'll be using them. We did find sometimes the buses were a bit unreliable, but overall we never had any serious issues. Downloading the Talinja app was a huge help when it came to accessing bus times and routes. Something else I noticed was that Malta seems to love cats. Seriously, they were everywhere. Which I guess is fine if you're not allergic like I am. All in all, we had such a lovely time in Malta. It was the perfect mix of relaxation, culture, history, and adventure. Going in May was also perfect because it wasn't very busy on the tourist side yet, and the weather was gorgeous and warm. The only issue we had was some wind, but other than that, the sun was out pretty much every day. I just wish the water was a bit warmer. I hope you get to visit Malta someday soon. It's so good to be able to travel again. Thanks for watching.